Thank you very much. I am very thoughtful and I'm very aware that I'm treading over water in this presentation today, which I think is being discussed for the first time that I know uh, throughout uh, this part of the world, not just Lebanon. It's a very sensitive issue. It's very sensitive to talk about the, the subject I'm going to get into, but I decided uh, to do it because I have a life mission, as you've heard. My mission is to, to serve this part of this world, part of the world, the Arab world. And uh, we should be aware of what is going on as a new trend. We are always worried and we talk about political issues and we think they are very important. But the trends in the, in the world, the trends that will shape the future are often neglected by us. I'm speaking in English because I was ordered to do so. I can speak in Arabic too. So I, it's not because uh, my ignorance of the Arabic language. And uh, I very rarely read a speech. And I was uh, talking uh, to Noah and I said, uh, this is a very sensitive subject and I don't want to be misquoted. So maybe this is since 10 years I didn't read a speech. I always uh, speak out. But this is a very sensitive subject, and I know it is especially sensitive in this country. But it's my duty to bring it out to the discussion so that we know what's going on in reality. A trendy wave of populism, again, I, at the age of 81, I need hearing aid, I need uh, seeing aid, I need a lot of aid. So I will use, it, uh, use this, this aid. No, I think I look better without it. <laughs> uh, a trendy wave of populism, and what you see in Lebanon is populism. This movement that you are seeing, if you want to define it, it's a populist movement. It's now invading Western countries. It's not special for Lebanon, it's not tailored for Lebanon, and casting its shadows on the rest of the world. Populism cannot be linked to particular voters, specific socio-psychological profiles, or a certain political style. We do not have, with populism, a clearly defined ideology, not yet such as socialism and clear or democracy. Liberalism or neo-liberalism or neo-democracy. But populism shows a specific and identifiable internal logic. And I want you to see the logic because what is happening, what we are looking at the outcome, what they say, what goes on, what they do, but it's, it's time to focus on the logic. Populism shows a specific and identifiable internal logic. Populists are not only hostile to the elites, the experts and public figures who help those around them to navigate the heavy responsibilities that come with self-rule, but they are fundamentally anti-pluralistic. Their constant claim is that only we represent the true people. Only we. And uh, one of the populists in Lebanon that I watched on the TV saying, I heard him personally, and I saw him, saying that the president of Lebanon, His Excellency General Ong, asked us to 
delegate a team to negotiate with me. Indeed, the president did ask that form a, a, common, a, a common delegation and let's discuss and negotiate. This gentleman said, of course not. Why should we negotiate with you? We are the people. We are the source of power. We don't negotiate with the president. We dictate and the government, including the president, has to execute. You are an executive power. We are the legislative power. This, this statement, I don't think, was, was seen or analyzed enough by the elite in, in this country. How come nobody managed to try to understand the logic in such a statement, which is very indicative? I remember many years ago I had the honor of being a friend of uh, the President of the United States of America, Jimmy Carter. And uh, he, was, he was one of the very rare presidents that I, in the U.S. that I, I got to make friendship with. He told me after he left office, we had dinner with him in Paris with his wife, and I said, Mr. President, I want to ask you, how did you take such unethical and unreligious decisions? Well, I know that you are a person of honor and ethics, and you are a religious person, and you, do take, you took decisions which I believe are against your faith. He said, let me tell you something, Farah, and I want you to convey this to everybody you can meet uh, in the Arab world, especially in the ruling uh, circles. In the U.S., the president is the highest ranking servant of the country. My boss is the people. I serve the people. And my duty is to do what the people decide on. And the process I use in order to get to this conclusion of what the people want is a very complicated process, process in the U.S. because they have what we call the due process of decision making because any decision goes through many agencies and many think tanks and many etc. He says, when I get a file on my desk, which says that this decision is in the interest of the American people, I have no right to think what I think about it. Because here I'm serving my employer. And when my employer tells me to do it, I do it. Therefore, I sleep with conscience, my conscience, because I am do in, in this office, I am an employee. And my boss says, do this, I do it, and I say, yes, sir. Now, he said many other things which are not this, at this point relevant, but what brought my attention to this serious issue that the world is going through, the whole world, not just Lebanon, is that in a conference, in a recent conference in Lisbon, Sean Rosenberg, the professor of U.S. Irvine, stirred his audience by challenging a coarse supposition about America and the West. His theory, not mine, so that I'm not get, I'm misquoted. His theory was, his theory was, and he is an American professor. Democracy is devouring itself, and it won't last. That's something very serious as a statement which needs scholars, especially at this level of this distinguished university, to look into. As much as President Trump's critics want to throw America's troubles on his lap, Rosenberg says, 
The president is not the cause of democracy's plummet. Even if his successful anti-immigrant movement may have been symptomatic of democracy's decline. We are, he said, to blame. As the Constitution says, the American Constitution starts by the words, we the people. This is a statement of fact. The American Constitution starts with, with this sentence, we the people. Democracy is an ongoing hard work, which has not been given enough attention by the Democrats in the world. In fact, I challenge anybody to define to me democracy, although we say it's a clear ideology. The American, America is a democracy, but India is the oldest democracy. But the, the Indian democracy is different from the American, from the French, from any other democracy. There are multiples of democracies that are different. There is no template that says this is how democracy should be. And as society's elite have increasingly been shelved citizens, have proved inactive intellectually and emotionally to administer a well-functioning democracy. Consequently, consequently, the center has crumbled and millions of frustrated and perplexed voters have turned in desperation to the right-wing populace. So we, we, we don't have, what, what is wrong with, the, with, with us is we always see the trees and we don't look at the forest. We see what a, a, a single in the incident or a movement or an expression. But this is all symptotic, sym symbolic of a, of a major shift and change in the world. President Macron at the recent conference on peace in Munich peace and security, said that it was expected that Western culture will prevail worldwide. Yet, unfortunately, he says, other cultures are emerging. In deeply rooted democracies like the United States, democratic governance will continue its unstoppable weakening and will eventually nose dive at the hand of the populists who claim holding a single distinction between left and right that is read by them right and wrong. So right with a W versus right with an R. The last half of the, tw of the 20th century witnessed the golden age of democracy. In 1945, three years before I was born, democracies, there were only 20 democracies throughout the world. By the end of the century, there were 87. But then came the great setback. In the second decade of this century, the swing to democracy abruptly and worryingly stopped and gradually upturned. Right-wing populists have taken power or threatened to in many European countries. even in Brazil and in, in France and in many countries in the world, over 30 countries. As Rosenberg notes, again it's Nosen, Rosenberg, not me. As Rosenberg notes, by some metrics, the right wing overall populist share of the popular vote in Europe has more than tripled from 4% representation in the parliament 
in 1998 to approximately 13% in 2018 and pray for America, to America for this. But since now it is shared by every individual, every human being, there must be a sort of discipline. The Americans say the internet is outside this world, it's in another sphere. There are no boundaries, well it's true. In the internet, there is no Lebanon and Egypt or Mar or, or uh, Chicago. And on the internet, it's one 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 slate. Slate. It's wherever you are, it's the same internet. And there is no jurisdiction. No country has any power over the internet. Obviously, the U.S. has the power over the internet. But he says no country in the world has jurisdiction over the internet. And you should not uh, waste yourself trying to do government. In spite of that, I fought for this forum. And uh, only recently, five years ago, I wrote to Joe Biden in his capacity as vice president and as such he is the speaker of the Congress. I said, because I love America and love the Internet, I beg you to do something about the Internet government. Because unless you do so, we'll have fragmentation of the world. Because we know for a fact that Chinese have developed, uh, they have developed another Internet, which is probably technically superior, at least in one respect, it's, it's multilingualization compared to the American Internet. So the world, as soon as China decides to launch its own internet, the world may move to that internet because it's government, because it has rules, it has discipline. And I didn't want that. I love America. I wanted America to see this. And I was lucky to know that Joe Biden put subject for discussion in the Congress, unfortunately. One senator said, no, our internet is not for sale, and I call for closing the subject, no discussion, and the discussion was closed. Now we have, as a result, the dominance of the social media. Now the social media has taken over the world. Give me five individuals who are experts on social media and they can start any movement in the world. This, this is a fact. And also, the lack of governance on the internet creates a serious problem for the world and for the every user in the world. You can character assassinate, you can spread spread rumors which are unbased. You can destroy interests of countries and of individuals and of society. So, now with my daughter Jumana, and if you distribute the written text, uh, she is leading a project to provide governance of the internet through the social media, not through the government of America, because the U.S. was not allowed. What we're saying now is that we are going to to ask the media, to, to ask the social media users to become professionals. You look at the great professions of the world, medicine, accounting, lawyers, etc. They are all professions like social media. Social media should be developed to become a profession. Where you get a certificate that you are a certified social media expert. This is a new concept I'm promoting. Because that's the only way out. So if, a, if some groups in each country can get together and decide that we want to form 
And I learned this because I, I chaired at least 20 organizations concerned with uh, standard, standard writing. Standard setting has been my life. I participated in setting the standards of accounting all over the world on the Board of Accounting Standards and on many other uh, organizations and many other professions. So the only way is that we become professional and we professionalize the social media. So if you are not certified, then your whatever you say is dismissed and will not be respected and will not have impact. I'm going to fight for this and I'll continue to do so. And I called them an international conference seven months ago in Amman and we are now, you will have all of this on our website. We have uh, provided some concepts for professionalizing social media. I, I would like to leave the written text uh, if possible and will not go into details, but I want to, uh, one of the quotations I want you to hear is uh, by Karl Marx. Karl Marx said many years ago, and I'm not a socialist, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dirty capitalist. <laughs> so I don't think I'm promoting <laughs> capitalism. As, as they call us, the liberal, the, the, the populists. <laughs> he said, Poverty does not create revolutions. Poverty does not create revolutions. What does is the awareness of poverty. You can be poor and never realize it, as has happened for many, many, many years and in many countries. And he says the duty of the leader of, uh, of, the, of any country or region is to make sure that this awareness is not created among among his uh, his people and he, he does it through his aids so what, what, what Marx exactly says is that and the duty of the, uh, the the despot's job is to make you poor and the duty of his team is to make you aware of your poverty, unaware of your poverty. Which is very easy, in, it used to be very easy in the past before the impact of, uh, of media. I want to close and smith, skip uh, the rest of my speech and leave time for discussion. And I would like to, when it comes to the U.S., the problem might be larger than controversial when the controversial man occupying the White House and democracy and will remain menaced, no matter who is at the, at the top of the government in the U.S. Conclusion. For democracy to survive, we need to reinvent it. In the age of the internet and social media, democracy in any country in the world cannot survive. Because, as I, I say in the text and which I skipped, the idea is that the people who are on the internet realize their power and realize that they can make a statement which can spread all over the world much more than the, the, the statement by a president of a country. Because they have the power to make it spread. They know how to use the, the, the great power of the internet and social media, which governments normally don't. So, for democracy to survive, it has to reinvent itself. This is a serious call from this humble man to all leaders 
to get to work and try to reshape the rules of democracy in the internet era, in the knowledge era. My next speech on uh, RT will be on this particular subject, which is the how how in the knowledge age everything has changed, what I call the fourth industrial revolution. As for populism, it is yet to define its ideology and methodology of representation. Of course, we recognize that you are the people. You are the boss, you dictate. But what is your process for dictation? Can you get to a consensus? I challenge any group of populists, populists anywhere in the world to be able to, to sign on a, a single declaration sp sp uh, defining their, their demands and their requests. It will be a multiple of different views and different uh, ideas. But is the world is going, and I'm very happy that we have so many of my grandchildren here. I have nine grandchildren, and uh, five of them graduated from university. So I, I have great love and great faith in, in the young uh, generation. Maybe you could do better than we did, or better than me, and try to see how we can bridge this democracy in, in knowledge age to meet the demands of the populace. I'm not dismissing them, I'm not against them. But I don't know how if, they, if the whole government and the parliament and the president resign, how are they going to rule? How are they going to take decisions? This is yet to be seen, it's not there. So we take many years until either democracy revives itself or populism invents itself. One has to reinvent itself and the other needs to invent itself. And this is, I think, is the greatest challenge humanity is facing. Because it impacts and influences every one of us and everything we do or we want to do. Thank you very much. I stand to be examined and tested. <laughs> Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Your Excellency, Dr. Abu Ghazali. Now uh, the floor is open for uh, questions, so please raise your hand. I don't think we need a microphone, so just stand up and uh, we'll go one by one. Yes, and yes, identify yourself, your name, your major, and then please ask the question. Uh, go ahead. It's not fine. Uh, for I have hearing problems. <laughs> it's fine for you as a young man. Uh, we have a. Uh, stand next to you. Okay. okay. We, we can. Uh, there is a microphone. There is a. Yeah, there is one. Okay. Yeah. So. Can we find Yeah, go ahead, Majid. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you said that uh, Trump will declare war on China before October. Is it because of the attempt to create a new internet, or is it because of something else? Huh. <laughs> I, I, I have uh, spoken and written a lot on this subject. There are at least 20 good reasons for the U.S. to, to attack China. And I have no doubt in my mind that this third war, third world war is coming, and this year, and we have to be prepared for it psychologically. Define third world war. <laughs> now, internet is one of them, but there are many other, as I will just mention a few of the problems between the U.S. and the U.N., and the U.S. and China. 
intellectual property or innovation and invention. China is, re is, is registering, and as it has been mentioned, we are the largest intellectual property firm in the world. We know that China registers every year half a million new inventions. There, is not any, there isn't uh, 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 10 new inventions in the sense we understand something new, no. But under the World Intellectual Property Organization of the United Nations, on which board I served also, innovation is an invention. So if I take this mic and develop it in a way that it becomes more audible and more convenient, it becomes a new invention. So the definition of innovation is any change that is useful and commercially viable. And the Chinese are very good at this. They can take any product and make it into anything. So that intellectual property. And Trump said in one of his statements, this is not secret, in an announcement, he said China owes us trillions, not millions, not billions, trillions, trillions of dollars for the theft of our intellectual property. And one of the subjects he would like to discuss in a meeting with the Chinese after the war, because wars always end with meetings and agreements. And that's why the Chinese don't want to talk, because they know that his demands are unrealizable. If you want me to pay you 30, 30 trillion dollars for what theft, and apply this all over the world for every country who, who produce something, that's, that's complete chaos. So innovation and intellectual property is another, another cause. The, the major other issue is the one that relates to how to govern the world. The US believes that all the agreements subsequent to World War II, including Britain was, are obsolete. And that's why everything he does now is not in compliance with WTO. WTO cannot allow you to impose customs without referring to the WTO rules. So he is talking about a new world order. And my guess, this is a guess, is that the best he would want to expect, accept and reach is a unipo, uh, uh, due bi bipolar bipolar governance of the world. The Chinese say we're not interested. We don't want to rule the world. We never ruled the world. Good, good, great America, you rule the world alone. Just leave us with our little project the Belt and Road, which is the old Silk Road project. That's all we want. You take the world. You govern every country in the world. So there is, there is, uh, there are many, many basic issues where the two parties, two sides, the great, two greatest countries and two, the two greatest economies, disagree on, and therefore. And internet was one of them because internet is the most powerful tool in the world. You can fourth subject is the currency. As a result of Bretton Wood and with the agreement uh, signed with the with the British to give up the, the, the sterling pound, the dollar became God. And uh, I was witness to the negotiations of the Chinese to access to the. WTO, and they said we're willing to talk about anything except linking our currency to the dollar. And it's not linked yet, until today. Again, they insisted to be considered developing countries. You go to Chicago and you think you are in New York. But the Chinese say we are a developing country, because it gives them the advantages of developing countries. So there are many issues to disagree on which cannot be solved without a confrontation. So a confrontation is a mean, and I'm not, this is not me. An American think tank says, 
America will, or Trump will, manufacture a war in order to achieve what he wants to achieve. That's a well answer. I have, <laughs> uh, I have a question for Dr. Abu Hazel. Halal, I'm yes. over here. I'm over here. Uh, sir. Yes. As I introduced myself to you, I'm a physician. I've noticed you have not looked at the uh, modern techniques in medicine to alert or even change the paradigms of thinking. The paradigms of thinking. How does the thought process develop in the human brain? We use now something called plasma electric stimulation to LA to remove the pressure. The microphone is not working, I guess. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. 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 Is that good enough? Yes. All right. So let me repeat myself. Did the Talal Abu Ghazali Foundation look at the recent technological, medical technological advances and how to change paradigms of thinking, sometimes to, to, to raise pureness in depression or anxiety, other times to institute a new thoughts and ideas, and sometimes we use magnetic stimulation of the brain, called TMS, transcranial stimulation, to relieve, to relieve uh, uh, anxiety and depression. And other times, there are other techniques to introduce thought processing through electrical stimulation of the brain. I think this is a very novel uh, technique that's being used now in innocence and in benevolence to treat diseases and, and other problems. But it will also affect uh, social behavior and social <coughs> thought processing. Uh, I would like to see the Abu Hazel Foundation address this issue in our communities because it's so complex with religion, with politics, with uh, feelings and emotions, history and whatnot. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I admit Thank you. ignorance about the subject, but I know one thing. I know that uh, artificial intelligence can solve this issue easily. Yeah. Through artificial intelligence, we can address the subject I don't want to talk uh, because I know that you have classes to go to and you have important things to go to, much more important than me. But uh, 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 the artificial intelligence can, can be used as a technique in order to uh, address this issue, like it can be used to address, uh, for example, education. Google is now working for the young uh, to discourage you from studying. Google is working now on a brain through artificial intelligence which can be inputted in you when you are 12 years old and you become ready for a university degree. And this is not a joke. This is a process. This is something in process. So you don't have to, have to spend 11 years studying just by one shot. You have a brain which is as educated as a university graduate. So anything can be done with artificial intelligence. Okay, we're going to take a uh, question from the guests, but we, we'd like to take some of the students' uh, questions first. I'm not a student. Anyhow, my question is, you mentioned WTO and innovation and things like this. So I'm just wondering, in your opinion, um, I mean, the Middle East area, you know, instead of always looking at the U.S. and China, I'd like to look closer at our region and how you feel about how innovation is being uh, harnessed here and what regulations and what international treaties we've signed or not signed, because I know that, uh, you know, you hear all these different terms, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I think as Lebanese citizens, we should understand and also ask to be part of the global economies, which we're totally out of. We're not, we're not uh, involved in sort of a lot of international global agreements for whatever reason. Maybe that's top down, the politicians don't see the importance in them. So I wanted to know how you feel about it. This is my domain. I, I served on the committee of experts on the board of the WTO and on the board of the, uh, intellectual property. And, uh, uh, and I. I have seen that, unfortunately, we are very lazy, I can say, all our countries. 
in, uh, in being involved in the process, not just in communicating it to you. The representatives hardly attended the, the negotiating meetings. All of these agreements on everything in trade, in business, in uh, services are done in a negotiation room. And all, everybody, every government in the world can be part of that negotiation room. Unfortunately, when I attended these negotiations, I hardly see any Arabs. Oh, and that's bad. We should tell the Tawar that. That's bad. I hardly, because they say, okay, they are going to discuss and come up with a common agreement, so let's wait with, for the agreement, because they are going to negotiate it. Why worry? I just wanted to one more thing, because I know that we were supposed to be exporting $20 billion worth of agri fruits and vegetables from Lebanon, which we didn't do any of, which we would have created lots of jobs and a lot of money for the Lebanese people, which is a shame. Thank you. And this is a very sensitive subject. You know, WTO addressed uh, all sectors, including everything, except two. One which they could not touch, even talk about, and it is called oil. Oil and energy is a subject that is taboo in, in the World Trade Organization. The U.S. would not allow. It's considered a strategic subject. It's not a property. It's not a good. It's not a service. It's strategy. And the second is agriculture. The agricultural agreement took 20 years, and still it is in the making. They can't agree because, unfortunately, we don't realize this. The major economies of the world consider agriculture the most important sector. And they cannot afford any agreement which does not address the concerns of their agricultural community. And I attended a meeting where the French said, we cannot meet our people if you do this because the agriculture community will not allow it. Unfortunately, that's the situation. Uh, actually, we are going to have a special meeting, students, uh, with Dr. Abu Ghazali after the talk. So let's give some of the faculty maybe some questions and guests. Uh, yes, uh, Sarah, and then Dr. Zina. Uh, Dr. Talal, it's a great honor to be here. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. So, um, at the beginning of your speech, you said that, I forgot the gentleman's name, said that the internet is the only place for real democracy. I agree with that. It's the great equalizer, better than death. But um, at some point during your lecture, you said that you would advocate for a certificate that people would use with social media and that certificate would make their opinions more viable for the public. Um, I want to like, just understand better this point of view because we're talking about populism, which is supposed to be that we want to be, you know, we want better um, democracy, essentially, which is like the people get to choose, which is what the internet is giving us. It's what social media is giving us. So when you have someone governing whose opinions are valid, doesn't that kind of do the exact opposite of what populism is supposed to be? So what is the question? My question is, what is the argument behind the certification? Like, why, why do you think it would be a good idea? Uh, on social media? Yes. yes, because imagine what would have happened to us, all of us, if the medical industry or business was not a profession. You become a doctor, and then you join an association, and you get certified as a, as a medical doctor. Accountancy, the Association of Accountants decides who is authorized to sign on a financial report. It shouldn't be a profession. This is an expression. This is a free will. This is democracy. We cannot oppose an authoritarian system or a corrupt system. But with democratic media, it's fine. Internet, yeah, but you don't, you don't want. But your excellency, you don't want to do something and destroy something else. If if you leave your social media uncontrolled, one day, if I don't like you, I can assassinate you on the social media. I can put all the crimes in the world on you, and I can claim everything bad about you. I'm talking about. The social media being a profession, 
so that it, is, it, it does not do the wrong things. I want them to be very effective. And actually, the, the, the doctor decision, the doctor professionalization of the, uh, of the medical business industry developed after they became a profession. It did not in, in, in have, it did not in, impact negatively. And Lebanon, some of the authorities are assassinating us without the internet. You know, we're creating lies, and etc. We're being in prison. How, how would you feel if I write a, bl a blog about you tomorrow, claiming that claiming that I saw you in a nightclub, <laughs> and that you went out with a beautiful girl and you took her to her apartment, and I can print the whole story, and everybody would like to read it because it becomes, becomes interesting news. That's what I want to protect. I don't want to protect the good things in the media. I, I. I started them, I led them, I chaired, I chaired the ICT task force which developed all of this. But I don't I want to protect humanity. We have social media with power without any human feeling, without the concern for humanity. Maybe it's adding liabilities on those who use the social media that they can be legally uh, yeah, there are it's part it's of it. people, not populism. People have problems with the authority. Authority. They have means to find back or to correct. If the authority doesn't respond, there should be a way. You respond and everybody resigns. No, no, no. no. How, how are you going to rule with the people? We're talking about Lebanon. In no instance, I think the people in the Supreme Court said they really, really want to change the system. No, of course they said it. <laughs> 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 they are accused. It's not that we need more people, more authorities, more regular system and appointees. I'm not against them. I'm saying that they need to regulate, regulate the way the populists want to operate. يعطوني طريقة تركيب اللي أخذ الديسيجن بروسس. How do I communicate it? What? بهذول اللي من مجلس النواب اللي انتخبتهم. Now you're saying I want them out, but you elected them. It's about free democracy. What we are having here and other places is not the correct democracy. Hard marks are. We need to make people aware when they are poor or something else. But we don't have the means, we cannot make people aware. We are democracy based on people. So first, thank you so much for this very interesting lecture. I have three questions actually. I want this, in your opinion, the shift from unipolarity to bipolarity because you talked about Obor, uh, the Chinese, uh, you know, reviving of the Silk Route. And you said, uh, because I think someone else said, and you answered them quickly saying that they don't want the governance of, they don't want to share, and, and this, you know, unipolar world, they'd rather maybe have their economical part. Uh, how true do you really believe in this? Actually, when you want economical gain, Will this automatically lead to political gain as well? My first question. My second question would be maybe the debate that you are conducting now uh, for the populist or the pop who is really claiming that uh, they are there and they want colonial colon and they don't want to start anywhere and they don't want to have a head. What is your first? Uh, uh, what do you uh, actually? How do you organize them out uh, as as um, as an advice? How should, what's their ABC in a way in a short way? What do you advise them? 
Okay, thank you so much. I know it's a long question, but I mean, I would love to hear your answer. And first, unipolarity and economy. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> أنا مش ضد البوبيلست أبدا بس بدي فهموني as an ignorant person يقولوا لي كيف حيعملوا لما يستلموا الحكم؟ مش حيعملوا انتخابات ولا بدهم يقعدوا كل يوم بالوسط المالي البلد ويقرروا شو بدهم ثاني يوم؟ كيف بدهم كيف بدهم يديروا الأمور؟ اشرحوا لنا احنا معهم بس اشرحوا لنا إذا في شيء بده يتغير من نظام لنظام اشرحوا لنا إياه هذا الموضوع مش مفهوم لا لهم ولا لنا مش بس لي هم مش فاهمين ما في اثنين متفقين على شو كيف بدهم يعملوا طريقه الحكم هذا هذا ذا از فاكت يعني ما في يو بيشينج تو ا كونفرتر هير اي جست وونت تو نو مور اي وونت ايفري وان تو ليسن مور فروم يور ويزدوم تو وات از ذا ايبو وات دو يو ادفايس ذيم تو دو هاو شود ذي جاذر اف ذي وونت تو هاف ان امباكت وان داي اذروايز انا This is happening already in think tanks in the world. All of the countries. These are the people who are in the world. These are the people who are in the world. These are the people who are in the world. Now, the people who are in the world are not the same. They 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 are developing, trying to formulate certain principles and policies. They are trying. The same thing is happening in many countries in the world. You have 30 countries now. عم بتعاني او مش عم بتعاني عم بتواجه مشكله انه الشعب بيقول احنا الشعب انا اللي بقرر ما انا موافق انت اصلا بتقول انا قلت انا قلت مش معترض انا قلت الدستور الامريكي بيقول وي ذا بيبل اي بس وات از ذا ميكانيزم كيف انت بدك تدير الامور خلي واحد يشرح لي اياها فلذلك انا اذا بيحبوا ينجحوا الشباب اللي قاعدين على الوزاره يعني جزء منهم يضل هناك بس جزء يقعد ويرسم بلاش يرد على الرئيس ويعطيه فلوس بقول له احنا بنقرر وانت تنفذ حال اعطيني شو بدك انفذ جزء منهم يقعد يوقع الطاولة ويقولوا هذا اللي بدنا اياه بس اخذت شيء بقول لهم عن جزء بقول لهم انت بتعمل طيب يعني هم نفسهم الشباب اللي الثائرين وانا ثائر انا 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 بديت في حركه تحولني العرب ما في حدا ثائر أنا <تصفيق> 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 أنا عارف أنا عارف إنه الموضوع راح يقلت لكم موضوع حساس ومش مش جاي لأكسب شعبية ما نزل على الانتخابات عندكم ولا بأكتب على وظيفة مش ما أكتب على وظيفة ولا طالب طالب ولا محتاج شيء أنا جاي لأواعي شعبي والناس اللي بحبهم خصوصا الشباب إنه ما الواحد ينجرف وراء إنه بدنا نعمل بدنا نزور بدنا قبل ما نزور You can't get there until you know where is there صعب حكمة بسيطة من الحكم إنه الواحد بيوصل لمحل يعرف شو شو هو المحل اللي بيوصل له أنا بدي أوصل لهونيك وين هونيك؟ That's the problem of our president actually يعني وصل لهونيك لوين وصل صوتك صوتك مش صوتك Yeah I need the mic Okay, مرحبا. My name is Nawaz Sulah. I'm a lecturer with exchange students, and I'm majoring in political science. And I have a question concerning your definition of populism. Okay, I have a question concerning your definition of populism, because in Europe, populism has always the right-wing touch, and it's something considered to be a 
of the right-wing spectrum. So how would you personally differentiate populist movements in the Middle East um, from the populist movements in Europe? Since in the Middle East we have a different concept of nation-state, we have a different concept of community compared to Europe. So how can we understand this difference and is there any difference? I assume that there is a problem like that. There is a democracy, which I support. There is a populism, which I support, but I don't know where I will get it. I will support it if I know what is their ideology and what is their methodology and mechanism for ruling. I am the first one to say it in any country. There are two tracks. Both tracks have to work to do their homework. Democracy is fading because it does not work anymore when the people say, I am the people. Mission Parliament, Wala Congress, Wala Aya Muassasi, it matthil me. Anna, ma matthil nafsi. Anna, ma matthil nafsi, ma fi hada bil matthil me. Wizan takhab nas, takhab tum, anna li agarad ukhra, mish li matthuni. Yuqadu, yishtimu, yukharru kifum. Bas ma hada bil nub anni, anna li amdi tawqiya. We the people. هدول التو دايركشنز بدهم يشتغلوا على نفسهم، شو النتيجة؟ النتيجة إنه I I know also that في أمريكا there are there is a lot of work now going on on how to reinvent democracy. وهي الصيحات اللي سمعناها مش ضد الديمقراطية هي معها ولكنها تريد أن تصلح الديمقراطية. إذا الديمقراطية بتجيب واحد الناس كلها بتقول هذا ما خرج يكون في شيء غلط. أي واحد لانه هيك راي الناس بس مش لازم يكون راي الناس انه نجيبوا الشخص الغلط ونقول خلص الديموكراسي هيك بتقول في في اعتبارات بعدين ذا باور اوف سوشيال ميديا از ان از از نوت فير ات از نوت فير انك تحاربيني ومعك سلاح اسمه السوشيال ميديا وانا ما معي سلاح لانه هاي سلاح سوشيال ميديا ناو فور ذوز هو يوز ات از فيري يوسفول بس ذي ويل هاف تو ريباي they will have to pay a very heavy price. Because كما قال شكسبير, we often create instruments that are used against us. إذا أنت بدك تستعمل قوة السوشيال ميديا بتيجي أي حكومة وبتعمل دائرة للسوشيال ميديا و against السوشيال ميديا تبعك بلش أنا فيكي. بحط الجواسيس يشوفوك وين بتروحي وأعمل أخبارك. بصورك في كل محل وبشوه الصورة. They can they can counter attack you. أنا اللي خايف منه لحتى لا الحكومات ار ان اكتف في كل الدنيا قاعدين عم بيطلقوا الضربات ذير ويل كم داي وين الحكومات بتقرر تستعمل قوه السوشيال ميديا وتحارب الشعب ما بدها تحارب الشعب ولا بده الشعب يحارب الحكومات بدنا نوصل لصيغه بدنا بدنا البوبوليزم على راسي بس اكتب لي كيف بده يصير اتخاذ القرار في ظل البوبوليزم نقعد بس في في امام مجلس النواب ونقول احنا ما ترضين، طيب ما اعترض بس شو اللي بدك اياه؟ بدي اياهم كلهم يمشوا كلهم فاسدين على راسي، مشوا وبعدين شو بدك تعمل؟ انتخابات المشكله انه في تو فلسفيز عم بتصارعوا الان وانا محايد انا ما حد يفهمني اني انا ضد البوبوليزم ولا اني ضد الديمقراطيه، انا از سكولر عم بقول وي نيد تو دو ا لوت اوف ورك to see how we can develop democracy to, to become more representative of the people. وبنفس الوقت نشوف كيف البوبوليزم نخليها ready to, to rule the people. You can see the birth in the name. So there is a left and a right populist movement? A left and a right populist movement today? Yeah, uh, Do we see leftist populist movements? As well as right, yes. Okay. yes. Because, so this because, is, uh, because, yeah, no, because, 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 يعني لذلك هم بيستعملوا استعملت انا كلمه انه بدل ليفت اند رايت يس ليفت بارت رايت رايت وذ ار 
Okay, so let's. I think we are going to do it with the students. A one, uh, we'll take one question from the gentleman and the student that I apologize, I confiscated the mic from her. So oh. we'll give you right the mic. Okay. Dr. Talal, you are very right when you said our young man in the street started very well, but we were waiting every day for them to decide what do they want. They didn't spell out what they wanted. And every day, day after day, it became meaningless. They are going down on the streets. Killoni ani killon. Does mean what is substitute? Nobody knows. Nobody came up with a precise one thing of what they wanted. They wanted to change the system. Change it what? What kind of another system they have? Nobody came up with it. This reminds me of a lot of the country of the world. That's, uh, that's, so let's, uh, that's a very good comment. Let's hear from two students questions and then we'll get the answer from Dr. Abazel. So go ahead. Uh, you had your. Where's the mic? Uh, excuse me, just I want to give like a certain point. Yes. Uh, first time, uh, hi, Dr. Abazel. It's an honor that I'm greeting you. Uh, second, I'm a senior student here at LEU. I was part of the uh, so called revolution. We want to label it as a revolution of the movement. Uh, since day one, and uh, I assure you that it is true that you can't have this deal or a, a council for what the people want. You know, it's not clear what they want. But I believe, and it's an opinion, that the reason for it is that we don't have the means to tell you what the majority of us truly want. The means to, to give you the answer is in the hand of the government. We can't conduct like a survey to tell you what we want, what is our goal. We don't have the expertise to do that. We, we don't have any previous experience in it. But uh, in addition, the government, even if the government can do such survey or any way of methodology that it can use to know the answer of what we want, we're not sure that they give us the true answer because we, there is no trust in the current government. That's why the main event or the main purpose was to re-elect them, although we know that we elected them. But to, to, to have re-election and to have new people and let those people think about if we should have new system or not, new rules or not. If nothing changed, then we deserve the outcome, because we, we erected it. So, thank you. One, two, then. Hello. So my name is Amani. I'm an Algerian student at uh, LAU studying international affairs. Uh, I'm, yet, I'm not yet an expert, but what you said tackled the question uh, inside my mind. So I'm the, um, I want your opinion about two points. The first one is that you mentioned uh, the concept of governance of the internet. And whenever we say governance, that means power and that means legitimacy. And when we say legitimacy, it means that somebody is going to give that legitimacy. And realistically, it's either a national or an international authority. And uh, don't you think that that will, will make the internet pol uh, politicized and make the information monopolized by these parties? And that's not what we want. On the second hand, or the second uh, point, is that in Algeria, when we did the protest, a lot of parties, a lot of media, tried to uh, give a different image of what we were doing and named it, for example, as a violent, uh, pro a vi a violent movement, which it was not, it was very peaceful. And so the Algerian people, to counter that, and I was among them very proudly, we used the social media individually to make a um, collective social media movement to say this is not what is happening. And every person that was in those protests protesting was taking their phone and put a video, for example, or whatever on social media to say this is the reality and not what you're trying to portray. 
And so the social media for the Algerian people, because it was not governed, it was a free space. And we could use it to get our rights. I, I want to make a distinction between two words which I use. Governing, governing and governance. I don't want to state rules of control at all. But I want to say that a decent profession, it is not acceptable in a decent profession to character as an aid somebody because you hate him and spread false lies about him. It is not right to become an agent for a foreign country and pretend that you are a nationalist and try to recruit terrorists. You know that you will never be able to, fight, to, uh, to win the fight against terrorism without governance on the internet. This is the governance. The governance I'm talking about is what, is what should not be done, not what you should do. You can do whatever you want, but this is what you should not do. On the internet, they preach their principles, the, the terrorists. On the internet, they recruit their members. On the internet, they control the, the terrorism acts. They guide them by time and by place and by on the internet. And you say, stop it. You cannot stop it because I can open an account this minute and tell you what I want what, what to do. And it's not in my name and you don't know who is it. Like I said, nobody knows that I'm a dog. And next time you use another, you use another ad email address and continue your service. You shut it in a minute and nobody knows the identity. I can open any domain name and nobody knows who I am. So that has to be controlled. It's not possible that I can just open an email, a domain name, register, and we are a domain name, by the way. We are a, one of the seven global domain name registrars in the world. Our business is how to register and, and how to, use, to uh, 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 rule differences of, uh, of uh, infringement, infringement in domain use, domain name use. There is no way without the ability to be able to say this is a bad site because, and we know who is the owner, and not just, and I can now go to the internet and say, Mustafa Muhammad al Ibrahim al Yael al Khouri. Nobody knows who I am. This is not the world you want to live in because it can ruin your family life if he wants. He can send a message about your family life, married or father or wife. And, and spread anything against you, and you can do nothing about it. Terrorism will never stop in this world without governance of the internet. I'm not talking about governing, governing the internet. I want just to establish rules of conduct, like in the medical profession. The medical profession says that you cannot, you cannot, you cannot. You cannot tell your client secrets to, unless authorized, etc. In the accounting profession where I started my business, there are rules about how I do my business without violating the ethics, ethical standards of the profession. This is what I'm talking about, the ethical standards. I'm not talking about your, your views. I'm talking about the ethical standards. You don't want to wake up one morning. Fortunately, I had a problem, fortunately, which was very simple for me. It was good. So I woke up one morning and I found a site on the internet which says Talal Abu Ghazali. I'm Talal we don't have this site. It says, no rush, no hurry, come to Talal Abu Ghazali for a free haircut for your dog. <laughs> Why? Because he wanted, to, wanted me to pay him to shut this account. This is a way of getting money out of me. Of course I didn't, because I'm on myself a, a, a registrar. So we, we managed to shut his account and get rid of it. Okay. But, but it can be serious. It can accusations without, without any basis and without foundation can be very serious and very damaging and unfairly. This is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the freedom. 
I'm talking about what should not happen. What is considered to be unethical? What is considered to be inhuman? What should be damaging to humanity? That we want to give a human face to the social media. Okay, uh, maybe we will just have few students stick around and we'll have an informal uh, okay. discussion with Dr. Abu Ghazali. And thank you everyone for being here.